joining us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is the voice of the Boise State Broncos, Bob Beeler. He's been on the show before. Bob, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation on a game day. Yeah, and it's a little bit later in the season this year. Last year, I think it was week two, and this year it is, uh, what, about week eight for you, week seven for us. Yeah, so a little later in the uh, context, uh, there's a little more there. Boise State ranked 14th, 6-0. and Just how good is Boise State? I think it's reminding me a lot of the team that went to the Fiesta Bowl two seasons ago. Uh, it's a team that uh, is very versatile. They can throw the ball. They can run the ball. The defense, I think, has been better than expected this year. And, you know, I mean, this to me is the toughest challenge to date, and I think will be the toughest challenge up until, you know, the postseason, either the Mountain West Championship game or a bowl game. I mean, BYU could easily be 7-0. and We could have two undefeated teams, two teams that are in the top 15 in the country playing tonight. But, uh, you know, seven points, close games. I mean, this BYU team certainly, I think, a bigger challenge than the record would indicate. Bob, does it concern you when you look at BYU's production over the last few games um, against Power 5 schools versus Boise State's um, and some of the Mountain West opponents that they've been facing? Yes, although Boise State hasn't played that many Mountain West opponents. They've played a couple. I mean, they've played a couple of Pac-12 teams. Uh, Washington State uh, beat UCLA. Um, you've got Oregon State that I thought, you know, is a team that's, you know, coming on a little bit. They they barely lost to Utah. And, uh, you know, I, so I think that the schedules are not as disparate as maybe, you know, people would think looking at them. I know West Virginia is undefeated, and uh, West Virginia right now, one of the 11 along with Boise State that hasn't lost yet. But uh, no, I think Boise State's played a pretty tough schedule. I really like the Washington State team out there. They're, they, to me, were a team that was tough to handle, very different than anybody else with that air raid attack. But uh, I think Boise State's played a pretty tough schedule. Last week, you know, if you don't get a couple on site, again, ifs and buts were candy and nuts. Uh, you know, you know, give us a couple onside kicks. That thing's, you know, 28 to 10. But, you know, you can say that in any game. I mean, uh, you know, UCLA, BYU lost by three. I'm sure if you change a play or two, you know, BYU wins that game. The matchup at running back is very intriguing to me. Jeremy McNichols, maybe one of the most underrated running backs in college football right now, 14 touchdowns, second most to Lamar Jackson. Uh, and then 18 games in a row with the touchdown. The dude gets in the end zone coming off of a 200-plus yard performance. Then there's Jamal Williams, second in the country in rush yards. has had a fantastic season. What do you think of the running back matchup tonight? Oh, I think it's fantastic, and I love running backs. I think when you think of college football over the history of college football, running back is a position that is really a glamour position. I think this is the biggest difference for BYU from last year to this year. They really didn't have that marquee running back last year, and I think it hurt them. And I look at Williams. This guy can run. This guy knows how to cut. This guy uses his big offensive line very well. Uh, you know, I think that he's a difference maker for BYU, and I think it's somebody that they did not have last year. And I think Boise State is going to have their hands full trying to stop him on, in the running game. McNichols, I don't expect to carry the ball 40 times, especially with BYU size up front. I would think Boise State would have to be a team that I think is going to have to get their yardage more so through the air today against BYU. I, I think that instead of 50-50-ish, I think it's probably going to be more of a 60-70-30 uh, kind of a, a game for Boise State passing and running, uh, although I think McNichols can get his 100 and can get into the end zone, but I think he's going to have to work for it. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but I think we've got two of the best running backs in football going against each other. Bob, who does Boise consider their rival? Is it BYU? <laughs> I guess it all depends on who you ask. Um if you ask me, I don't know that there's anybody that I would say is front and center that is a, a true rival out there in the in the sense of rival. I, I think sometimes it's hard to have somebody where you say is your number one rival where they wouldn't say that it's back. I think that makes it kind of difficult. So at least that's my opinion of it. You know, I think if you ask different fans or you ask different people, I think you're going to get different answers. I would have said until the Mountain West split into two divisions, I would have said either Fresno – or Nevada, mm -hmm. but we don't play them every year. So that kind of cheapens the rivalry a little bit when, you know, you don't see them but two times in every four years. I think that in order to be a rivalry, you have to have meaningful games played. I think you have to have both teams win games, which I think the BYU-Boise State uh, rivalry is headed that way. I think it could get there. But I think for me, at least at this stage, there's only been six games played. 
you know, to me, when I think of a rivalry, I think of a BYU Utah, Michigan Ohio State, something that's been played for you know fifty hundred, fifty to a hundred years. So. Bob Beeler, the voice of the Broncos, is on BYU Sports Nation. Bob, turnovers is such an interesting thing when I look at Boise State. Yet again, they're good at not turning the ball over. Yet, only three mm-hmm. takeaways on defense, but uh, you haven't needed a ton of those to, to be 6-0. and What's up with only three takeaways on defense? That sticks out to me. It does a little bit, and they are the only team of the 11 unbeatens that are minus on the turnover ratio. They are minus three. But there are six turnovers that you say is one of the fewest of the unbeaten teams. So they haven't been yeah. giving them away. I, I think part of the thing is they haven't gambled as much this year, different defensive coordinator. So I don't think they've come up with as many turnovers because they haven't gambled as much. But I also don't think they've given up the big play nearly as much as they did last year. Think of a couple of the touchdowns that uh, BYU was able to get in that game against Boise State. Uh, they were kind of busted plays, and they were definitely big plays. If you look at the sack number, I think that the sack number is high. Mm -hmm. If instead of 21 sacks, you had 14 sacks, but you had seven hurries, I wonder if any of those hurries would have turned into interceptions. Sure. So I think not gambling as much, being a little more, let things happen in front of you, make sure people don't get the big play, and the ability to pass rush with just four guys and not blitz, actually getting the quarterback down, I think is probably hurt. Myself, most games, if you gave me the choice, of no turnovers that you give away and you take none versus let's say two and two or three and three, I'm going to want zero and zero because I think more times than not, if there's no turnovers in the game, the better team is going to win. Now you've got an even matchup tonight, so that kind of changes things. But more times than not, Boise State has been the better team this season. And if you let me sign for no turnovers on either side like we had last week against Colorado State, although one could contend that the two onside kicks in the last five minutes were really turnovers because they were able to keep the football, and that's how the score got close from 28-3 to to 28-23. to But I would rather not give you something before getting something. In other words, if, if they came together, obviously you'd like to get three turnovers and give away none, but uh, I think I'd rather be stingy than get turnovers if I had the choice. Uh, yeah, you make a make a great point. It's a that's a great perspective there because as a as a DB, uh, if my defensive line if they're getting home um, and and the defense coordinator doesn't have to dial up pressures, then I can get more help with my linebackers, right, and and drop into more zone coverage, mm-hmm. which your quarterback or sh- a good quarterback shouldn't throw it anyway. Um, but uh, Bob, do you believe uh, Boise State will be in a New Year's six game if they won tonight? I think they can be, should be. I mean, I think this is the hardest game the rest of the season. I, mean, I don't believe that they're going to be in a New Year's Six game, although I thought the same thing two years ago, you know, without going undefeated. I think right now there's enough teams that have good records. Western Michigan is undefeated. Houston has lost the one. Now their problem, of course, is that they have to win the conference. I mean, they could beat Louisville, finish with one loss, but if Navy runs the table, sorry, guys, thanks for playing. You might be yeah. the highest-ranked non-Power 5 team, but you're not going to the New Year 6 because you're not a league champion. Uh, but, no, I, I think in order to get there, you're going to have to go unbeaten. So I think this one's key. I mean, this is not a conference game for Boise State. They could lose tonight and still win the Mountain West and, you know, still win out and finish, you know, 11-1 in the regular season, 12-1 and with the, you know, win in the conference championship, claim a championship. But that might be enough to knock them out of the New Year's 6 game. I, I think this is huge. I think if you look, if Boise State wins this game tonight, the three non-conference wins out of four that they're going to be able to show are going to be BYU, who I think will not lose a game after this one for sure. I mean, they, they've played their meat of their schedule already. This is the next time where they should just start to, you know, if they win tonight, BYU is going to close on an eight-game winning streak. To me, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but when you look at Boise State, a win over Washington State, and they continue to win, and the Oregon State win, I think, is a little better than people would have thought at the beginning of the season if you were able to notch them. So, yeah, I think they can get in a New Year's Six Bowl if they win this one tonight. But, again, there's still a couple of tough games. Wyoming looks better, and they have to face them in Laramie. Uh, Air Force has given them fits over the last two years. That's the last regular season game. And San Diego State is probably the team that if you're fortunate enough to win the Mountain, that you're going to have to beat in the Mountain West Championship game. But if you've gone undefeated to that point, the game's going to be here because San Diego State has already lost the game to South Alabama. So I think if you can get this one tonight, I think it does kind of set up nicely for Boise State to return to a big game. The stakes are high for this one for both teams. Should be a fun one. Bob, we appreciate the time and have a great call tonight.